So I just had a manifestation come in, and as I was listening to um, Neville Goddard's grandson on YouTube, he um, is really awesome. I think his name's Elmer, if I'm not mistaken. I just actually found his content, and I really love it. It's it's amazing. You can tell that this man loved his grandpa, you know? Um, there's even instances where Spirit has been telling me that he channels I think he channels his grandpa quite a bit, but um, anyway, can't really prove that, but he actually is just incredible. I was listening to him when I woke up this morning, and a manifestation that I really was waiting for for a while, like a long time, six months maybe at least, came in, and I was like, okay, I don't feel anything about this at all. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel anything. I felt numb almost. And there was this instance of like, is this bad? Because I, I should be happy because in order to impress the subconscious mind, we use our conscious will to decide what feelings we feel in the day, like which ones um, trump the other, you know? So for me, I was like, why couldn't I have been happy? And then it dawned on me because I've had manifestations come in before and taken away. But again, the reason that that happened was all me. It wasn't some outside external God doing this, you know? So I, I, I was like, okay, this is great that it came in, but this is too good to be true. And I don't trust it. So if I get happy about it, it's going to be taken from me tomorrow. And I think that this is, this is just something that, you know, it's it's a journey. We have to learn these things as we go, but it's really important that you use your Christ consciousness, your awareness, your your higher self is like recording, <laughs> almost recording you watching yourself from like an outside perspective. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, wow, I should be happy, right? Um, but then I was like, no, it's just going to be gone tomorrow which is exactly why it normally is. That's exactly why it happens. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So one of the biggest, you know, telltale signs is like you get your manifestation and you think it's going to be gone. It's, it's what we're doing is we're impressing on the subconscious mind that one, nothing is really ever good enough. And two, that we're not really truly genuinely happy for the good that comes in. But yet we're always pissed when the bad comes in, right? I guess... If I could have just lived in the moment and been excited, um, that that would have probably changed the course of probably tomorrow. But the thing is, I'm gonna start using sats, and I think it's amazing. It's um when you it's a state akin to sleep, and you basically just lay in bed right before you drift off to sleep, and you change what happened in the day. You start feeling the feeling of good things happening. You know, you just got a house. You you bought a house today. You won the lottery today. You you talk to your soulmate today. Whatever it is, you start telling yourself internally in your own mind before you drift off to bed that it was a totally different day, and um your subconscious mind absorbs it and will spit out something new for you tomorrow. Um, but again, if you're not actually feeling the feeling of good, then your subconscious mind doesn't know what to produce tomorrow besides bad because you keep putting this vibration out there for your reality to reflect the negativity. And for me, it was always lack. So even in getting abundance, even in getting my manifestation today, I still felt lack. This is exactly why gratitude is key in manifesting something so positive because you have to be in that energy of, wow, this is more than enough. Can you believe it? It's so exciting. It's so great. It's so great. It feels so good. Like, oh my God, it feels so amazing. Like I can change it now. Truth be told, I wish I could have changed it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I wish that when I would have seen it, I would have been like, oh my God, can't believe it's happening. Can't believe it's happening. But I think that the reason is it when you well one as you get older you you realize that thing life happens and and things do get taken away from you you know and so you don't want to just be overly ambitious and in kind of naive and childish too you know and i understand that you know it's it's a foolish thing i think to just get so carried away with excitement and joy and i mean 
a lot of us did that before and we had everything taken from us. But again, it's because you didn't know the law yet. You didn't understand the truth of what was happening. So you, you, of course you got excited because things were going great in your life. Chances are you got to rock bottom because you didn't understand you had subconscious programming still in your mind that needed to be handled. So of course you had it taken away from you and you didn't understand the law yet. So now, now I understand, but there's also this more mellow chill effect that I have. I'm not even really, there's no high highs and low lows anymore, um, which you know, I kind of don't like, I kind of wish I could be more excited when something happens. Um, but on the, on the opposite end, I'm also not like devastated when something bad happens much anymore either. Um, I kind of wish it was different (laughs) because I'd like to have some sort of emotion anymore. Um, I don't know if it's seasonal anxiety, depression, or if it's a sign of enlightenment. I'm not fucking sure. All I know is it would have been nice to see this manifestation and immediately get excited. But I think so many of us are like, oh, it's too good to be true. I'm not going to get excited about that. I'll be excited when I see it again and again and again. When it's consistent, then I'll get excited. But the problem is, unless you're feeling that state of excitement and joy, you're not telling your subconscious mind what it is that you want more of. So you can't really get to that level of over and over and over again, success, 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 unless you, you know, you feel excited about the success that you just had, even the first time right? So, um, I mean, I'm not saying though that you can't still have good things come in because no matter what, you're always going to be manifesting what you want. I guess it doesn't really matter too much about the feeling. I just know the feeling helps you stay there. That's what I've noticed. The feeling helps you stay in alignment with that. Like for instance, if somebody wins the lottery and in six months they lose it all, it's like they hadn't prepared themselves for for manifesting abundance yet it just happened on a fluke their manifestation happened sure but they lost it all because they weren't living in the vibration they weren't living in the feeling of abundance they weren't living beforehand in that in that energy of well I'm gonna have a a Maserati and I'm gonna go buy a yacht and I, I am always abundant I always get what I want right and that's why some people if they have billions of dollars and, and they lose it they know that they can acquire wealth again in a matter of seconds because they have an abundant mindset they already know that abundance it, how it is made how it is kept they know so even if they lose something they now know how to live an abundant lifestyle because they have it in their mind already they are already in an abundant mindset but me seeing this manifestation today, I should have been in an abundant mindset, but I wasn't. I can definitely go back and revise it and be like, wow, I jumped up and down and I was super excited. I can't even believe it happened. I'm so pumped. But I think that the reason that this happened to me is maybe so I can share with you guys that for many of you who have lost a lot on this journey, like a lot, like everything. Okay. I understand rock bottom. Trust me. I'm, I'm the queen of rock bottom. Okay. I think that I am being shown this so that I can tell you that it's just a healing thing. Like if you can just get through this, like if you can understand that this is simply a subconscious block, this is a limiting belief. That's all it is. Um, If you can just understand that it's human nature to fear success because you're afraid of losing it again, right? To fear anything good coming in because you think it'll be taken away from you again. It's too good to be true, right? So as many of us are walking into a new age here, you know, we're going in a new earth, right? We're building new earth as we speak. It's, it's amazing. Heaven and nirvana is real, but the problem is you have to first leave everything at the door. You have to leave everything behind in the old world. And that means your limiting beliefs. For me, it's God's going to give, but he's certainly going to take away. No, no. The subconscious mind only ever gives. It only ever gives. It just happened to give me for 33 years a lot of bullshit because I wasn't actually, uh, well, I didn't know the law and I didn't understand my thoughts. I didn't understand my feelings. And I certainly didn't understand that my thoughts were creating my reality. I had no idea. I had no idea of that, right? And that's what the great awakening is. You're awakening to the power and divinity within you. You're waking up to the fact that you are a creator. That's exactly what you're waking up to, that you are the creator. And your thoughts create. That's it. I mean, well, that's not the only thing you're waking up to. But in a grand scheme of things, that's what that's what you're waking up to. You're waking up to your divinity and your ability as a creator, as a God, to create your 
matrix to create what you see in front of you. Every single thing you see in front of you is a culmination of what you thought in your head first. And for me, today's success was something I already planted seeds for for six months. I kept telling myself, well, not that long. I kept telling myself for the last couple of weeks, I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get what I want. And I got it. I got it. But if I go deeper and deeper into negativity about it, like, yeah, but it'll be just taken from me tomorrow because that's what it was last six months, then this is where it's going to spiral out of control. So you really have to nip it in the bud. When you see it, you have to deal with it immediately. You've got to deal with the fact that you are afraid that it's too good to be true. And again, if a lot of you have left families and jobs and you guys have been at rock bottom, right? Then this is exactly the kind of thing that is inevitable. It's human nature to feel like rock bottom is all you're ever going to get. So you start to see the roof or, or, you know, the tip of the iceberg, you start to see a little bit of a, a, of a peak and you're like, nah, there's a valley right under it though. Right. So this is exactly why I think I'm going to really take, take it more seriously. The whole sats thing. I think right before bed, I'm going to start actually envisioning that um, my day, my entire day was changed. If anything negative came in, I hadn't been doing that. Actually, I hadn't been doing that. I think I'm going to start doing it and see where it gets me. Um, but yeah, I just, I think I'm going to start like, you know, making a podcast or vlogging this and just telling you what, what I've been going through as a conscious creator and a powerful manifester. I, I want to tell you more. Um, it was really strange. I wanted to share a story that, um, two nights ago I was journaling. It was like maybe midnight. It was so late. And all of a sudden I got this urge to call my insurance company, um, it was something I'd realized a couple days prior that my insurance payment didn't come out of my bank account. And I was like, what the hell is that about? I should have already had it out. So I, I said, I'm going to call them. I don't know if they're awake or if they're open, but, um, I'm going to call them anyway. So I call this company and I'm fighting with the IVR, the automated system. I'm fighting with this damn thing. And it's basically asking me, what policy are you calling for? And I keep telling it, my renter's insurance, my renter's insurance. And I keep saying this and it didn't hear me. Right. And I thought that was so strange. I was like, this is, this is the weirdest thing. Like, I don't understand customer service. And basically after I yelled at it to get me to customer service, all of a sudden this woman answers the phone. Her name was the exact same name of a friend that I recently had a manifestation coach who taught me a lot. And her name was the same name as this girl that I don't, I don't speak to anymore, but I was like, oh, wow, you know, that's such a pretty name. It's very uncommon, very uncommon name, pronounced the same and everything. I was like, oh, hi, I, you actually sound like a girl I used to know. Um, you didn't happen to live in this state, did you? And I, I told her the state and she's like, no, I did actually. Yes, I did live there. I was like, no. No, 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 no. She's like, yeah, I lived in this city. And I was like, oh my God, so did she. So did she. She lived in that city too. Um, and I started, I was like, but I don't think you're the same girl because the girl that I knew, she was, she taught me about manifestation. And she's like, oh my God. I literally just got off the phone with a friend of mine at lunch and she and I were talking about manifestation. So it wasn't the same girl, but it, the universe has such a really funny way of making people do and say things to really trigger some sort of healing event. Because what I noticed is this woman was really down on her luck. She was having a really hard day. She said, my friend is just constantly negative. All she does is tell me all the time how nothing is working in her life. And I said, wow, you know, that's really tough to be in a, a situation like that. You know, it's really hard to have a friend who doesn't want to empower you. You're, you're only the cheerleader for her. And she's like, yeah, it's so exhausting and I hate it. And it's like, I just don't know what to do. It's like, she's just, I mean, I don't know. And that's when I realized this is a reflection. This is a mirror image of what is internal within me. This need to fix people, this need to like complain about things external that I created from within. I could tell this woman had created her friend in this way. As a conscious creator, she created her friend 
to be this um, defiant, yeah, defiant against her advice. She was telling me, oh, I just, I tell her all the time, be more positive, be more uplifting, be, be better. <laughs> You'll get what you want. Just change your thinking. And she kept saying this over and over to me. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, but it is within you. The problem is within you. And it's like, I was answering my own question for my own problems recently because I've been bitching and moaning about how people aren't actually changing, how they're not growing and ascending around me. It's like they stay stuck and stagnant. And so in a weird, weird way, all of this happened at the exact same time, exactly as it was needed to when I needed this training exercise, right? I needed to see her as if she were a client and me from an outside perspective, giving her advice about this. And I needed it. I needed it as a coach. I needed it truly. Like I needed it also personally because I needed to see that this is an extension of me. She's just a product of my mind. Um, I brought her into my reality because of the way that I feel. So I said, all right, well, I mean, it just sounds like to me, you, you need somebody to encourage you and motivate you and uplift you. And she was like, yeah, that's exactly what I need. I just need I think I just need people in my life that when I say there's a problem, you agree. And you're like, yeah, no, that is right. There is a problem. I need to change it. And I said, wow, well, this sounds like to me, you and I met for a very specific reason today. And she agreed. And I said, I was fighting with the automated system. And if if that automated system hadn't have delayed me about five minutes, I, I wouldn't have met you. And I said... It, it, the universe is working out perfectly. The universe is always doing everything perfectly. Everything. Everything is perfect. Everything. Even this. This is perfect. And so she started telling me that if, if I had even answered the, your call 10 seconds prior, I wouldn't have had you. I would have gotten a different customer. So, so it, if, if I were off by even 10 seconds, I wouldn't have met this girl is basically what she was telling me. And anyway, by the end of it, I was like, if I wouldn't, if she wouldn't have had the same name, I wouldn't have said, oh, wow, she sounds like my ex-friend. If she wouldn't have sounded like my friend, I never would have said, did you live in this state? If she wouldn't have said, yes, I live in that state, I would have never suggested the manifestation thing. See, it's always perfect. You're always being lined up to do and say exactly what you need to do and say to be the version of you that you want to be, which for me, um, much more into coaching lately and I'm much more into inspiring people using manifestations. So in order to be in that higher self, in order to be that version of me that is inspiring and motivating and uplifting, right? I have to be that way. So this was like perfect training exercise. And it was just so serendipitous. I couldn't even believe she pronounced her name the same way. It's a very rare name. And I, I got, in fact, I remember my former friend, I actually told her I'd never met a girl with that name before. I remember I told her that. So this is only the second girl in this lifetime I've ever met with this name. And I thought it was so peculiar. All of it was so peculiar. I mean, I said, I don't know. I just got this weird feeling that I had to call you right now. Sadly, she wasn't able to help me. She told me to call the next day. And so I did. I called the next day about my payment. And guess what? The IVR, the automated system, it heard me right off the bat. First time I said, renter's insurance, the damn machine heard me. Isn't that funny? Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. So anyway, I heard it immediately. Um, process my request, sent me to a guy who was like, Hey, no problem. We're taking care of it. But I had to go through this series of events to make me a better person. Right. But It's all about how you view it too, because she had some really low vibes. Like she was like really not okay that day. And I started to actually become influenced by her negativity for a moment until I looked at it as she's a reflection. She's a mirror. She's, she's, she's not, um, one, we're never going to be friends. We're not. She didn't ask for my phone number. I didn't ask for hers, nothing like that. And two, I had to look at it from, um, a very detached state of mind that I don't need her in my life. She doesn't need me, but the universe wanted us to um, learn something from one another. 
right? So once you take the attachment out of it, everything becomes like you become disassociated in a way. You don't need them. You just see that person as a reflection of you, as a training exercise, as some sort of birds before land. You see it as something that is happening to you to prove that you are on the right track, right? One, I'm hella intuitive to be able to know to call when I did, right? Two, I'm starting to become more aware at how my thoughts are creating. Three, I'm instantly noticing other people's bad vibes. Four, I'm a way better coach because I can tell people exactly what they need to hear at exactly when they need to hear it. And five, I am actually noticing now that I am way ahead of what I thought I was when it comes to coaching and mentorship and things. So I'm noticing all of this as I go about these little events that don't seem to be a big deal to most. But to me, that 20 minute conversation was one of the biggest moments of my life. And I think that that's where it kind of all comes full circle and how I told you I don't feel the emotion anymore. I'm having a hard time feeling emotion. Um, In fact, the more I talk into this podcast right now, the more I feel emotion, um, the more I feel excitement, the more I feel fulfilled, the more I feel like, oh, wow, that's what I was meant to do. This is what I'm meant to talk about. That's how I feel. It's sometimes you just have to go through the motion. Sometimes you just have to act it out. In the 3D, sometimes you just have to do action, right? Um, you just have to do action. And, and I think that you'll have a lot more success if you start looking at it from a, a broader perspective and see why did I go through that? Why? I'm never going to see that girl again. I'm never going to talk to her again in my life. Why did I go through it? Anyway, thank you for listening. I love you guys. Bye-bye.